Hi everyone, this is uh, Emma, Josie, and I'm David, and welcome to our Mass Social Justice Workshop. These are our math concept and teaks. Our first teak is mathematical process standards. The student uses mathematical processes to acquire and demonstrate mathematical understanding. The student is expected to apply mathematics to problems arising in everyday life, society, and the workplace. They will communicate mathematical ideas, reasoning, and their implications using multiple representations, including symbols, diagrams, graphs, and language as appropriate. Our concept is data analysis. The student applies mathematical process standards to solve problems by collecting, organizing, displaying, and interpreting data. The student is expected to represent data on a frequency table, dot plot, or stem and leaf plot marked with whole numbers and fractions. This is our description of voter suppression and our rationale. So voter suppression is a strategy used to influence the outcome of an election by discouraging or preventing specific groups of people from voting. Our rationale is we believe this topic is important for kids to understand because we talk about democracy in school, but we don't often talk about the obstacles that we face in our democracy. And then our resources that we chose to introduce this topic of voter suppression to our class would start with Vote for Our Future. It talks about an elementary school that transforms into a polling station for the election season. And I th we thought this book would be really helpful because maybe kids don't really understand a polling station and how it works. So I thought this book would be cute for that. And then we chose Lillian's Right to Vote. It talks about an elderly African-American woman who began her voting journey all the way back when the Voting Rights Act passed in 1965 and how she still votes today and the like stages and changes that have happened throughout her voting history. Um, and then Give Us the Right to Vote, that is a chapter book about um, the voter suppression and how specifically it affects um, people of color and the barriers that are put in the way for them. Um, we really thought that would be a great book to drive our um, lesson and concept home. And then our internet sources that we chose, this first one um, is from the Teaching Tolerance website. It talks about the history of literacy tests and how African American uh, education wasn't really funded so these literacy tests were put in place and it would make it impossible for Black Americans to vote basically so their vote wouldn't be counted and they didn't have a say in the government that was supposed to be serving them. And the second link is just showing how tedious and finicky the voting process is and how small things can nullify your vote. So that's another way of suppressing votes. Um, and this last link is just a cute little infographic video and it shows um, what voter suppression is and how it specifically affects people of color versus white populations and how like the wait times are extremely different and things like that. And our activity uh, for this lesson is so um, each group, so our class will be uh, divided into groups and each group will get a state. Um, our states we chose were Texas, Maryland, Georgia, and California and Mississippi. We chose these states because each one of them is very different from another. Like for instance, Maryland is a very uh, rich state whereas Mississippi is a very poor state and we kind of wanted to um, reflect the data in, with those incomes that we're gonna look up and each group will determine three cities in the states that ha they have. Um, they will need a high income, an average income and a low income. So with the high and the low income, they're gonna determine the average. And then using that link for the polling uh, place locator, they are going to um, find the amount of polling stations within the three cities. And then with our graph or their table on the right, they are going to put the city, the income and the amount of polling stations that they have. 
After that, they are going to plot the points on their graph, and then they will have to make a legend to differentiate their points. And then after they have all of their data down, they are going to present it to the class. And we hope that what the students find is that um, higher income communities have more polling stations and lower income communities have very few or sometimes just even one polling station, um, which is like the main focus of our lesson. The end.